Earlier this year, we moved from an electric and a petrol car to two full electric ones, which means we now have to regularly charge two EVs. But not only that, I can only charge them up in a six hour window. When I say can only, I'm too tight to do otherwise. That six hour window is off peak. It's at night and it's about seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour at the current prices. And the other 18 hours are about 30 pence per kilowatt hour. So it's a quarter of the price to charge during that window. So of course, me being me, I'm going to do that. I can't just charge the car during the day and then charge the other one at night because again, I'm too tight. Then have the fact that we, on a semi-regular basis, probably maybe a third of the year over the 12 month period, have a press car as well, which is always full electric, of course. Then we could theoretically have three full electric vehicles thinking I could do with at least some charge. It is every now and then coming up to the point where we do have to charge two cars. And we've been relying on this three pin plug socket for now. It can add about 40, 50 miles of range to any EV. Any EV. The main charger can do the other one. So that's done us. But again, when you factor in that the press car, which might have to be fully charged for the guy to pick it up the next day or whatever, it's time to get another EV charger, to get two EVs charging at the proper seven kilowatt-ish rate. We have an 100 amp fuse, everything's checked out, so yes, we can have two chargers alongside our heat pump and everything else, that's not a problem. We want it to be as cheap as possible. So looking at the cheaper end of the market, I found a charger that made sense for us, and then realized that this charger was actually, well, better than my main charger. It had more features, and it was one of the cheaper ones, again, that you can buy. So I've swapped my main charger out for this one, which I'll show you in a second. And then the other old charger can be the secondary one, which will get installed over there at some point in the near future. So let me show you what is effectively, I suppose, my charger of choice. And if you've been watching in the background of a few other videos recently, you've probably already spotted it. And here she is. It's the Give Energy EV battery. Now there's two reasons I went for this. One is again, because it was at the cheaper end of the scale, but two, I have these, the Give Energy home battery systems. And I've, as I've been saying in those videos, people now are wanting one ecosystem. That, that's the battleground for current batteries and solar diver options and various other things. It's not so much the hardware, although that's a big deal, it's the fact that people like everything to be under one app, to talk to each other, to integrate into the system. So this gives me one app for my charger, for my home battery system, for my smart plugs, for my solar panels. It's all under one roof. It also has other features, which I don't really need, certainly given the price of export at the moment, but that could flip flop, I guess. Uh, it can do solar divert. So very briefly, if you're unaware of what that is, if you have solar panels on your roof and they're generating, in sunnier months anyway, let's say two kilowatts of energy and your house is using 0.5 kilowatts of energy, that gives you 1.5 kilowatts of excess solar. Now that could be just exported to the grid and you get paid for that. That's a green option, I guess. Or you could, if you have one of these, export that excess solar not export, but put it into your car, essentially. You could charge your car up with energy you're generating on your own roof. Or in this case, because I have the single ecosystem, the batteries that can talk to the charger, I could make it so, well, I've got excess solar, I want that to charge up my home battery system. When that home battery is full, I then want the car to get the excess solar if there is still some to go. I could make it so the excess solar goes into the car straight away, not the home battery, or a mixture of the two. I can make it so the charger doesn't deplete the home battery. So for example, if I want to do a, a during the day emergency top up for whatever reason and charge this up or that other car up, then I can do that without it depleting the home battery because I may want to store that to energy in the home battery for a saving session or an export session later on for peak times. So having again, this integration is exactly why I chose to give energy battery systems 
several years ago because I knew that eventually these will be around. It's taken them longer than I thought, if I'm honest, but they were always planning the solar divert options and the home chargers and various other stuff. And long term, that was the best option for me, especially you consider the price compared to other solar divert options out there. There are other things as well that it can do that I don't use. These, for example, um, RFID tags. So you can make it so you have to click one of these on to start the charge, to secure it, if you will, if you're bothered about that. For me, that's not an, a, a danger, really, in a residential environment. But you can install maybe a raft of these, you know, half a dozen, a dozen, in a business, a car park. So then only employees can use the charger, and I believe you can even make it so you know how much employee has charged and can bill them accordingly as like a perk of the job. Um, so there's other stuff as well that I won't use that um, it can do. Have a look on their website if you want the full details. But essentially, for me now, this is the one that I have not only gone for, of course, but I would probably recommend because it does a solar divert if that's what you like. And a lot of people have, have, have wanted that. With solar panels, it can make a lot of sense. You can do charging from the grid in terms of the, the uh, tariff integration. It doesn't support yet, or rather Octopus don't support the intelligent tariff, but they are, of course, and among others, on the list. So it will eventually be part of the Octopus intelligent tariff, but I don't know when. That's up to Octopus, not even Give Energy can control that as far as I understand it. Um, but of course, you can get things like Octopus Go and whatnot. My car supports intelligent, so that's how we use this. Um, and yeah, it, it, it just works. I mean, I've had a look inside a lot of EV chargers over the years, including these. And let's face it, they're just a PCB board with a big cable on it. They're not complicated. So I don't know how some of them are approaching four figures in terms of the cost. It's, it's, it, I'm obviously missing something here and from my non-engineering point of view. But yeah, so if you want in effectively a decent price with essentially all the features I think any other charger gives you, this for me is it. And contrary to what a few people on Twitter seem to think, I am not being paid by Give Energy. I am not in their pockets, as someone seems to suggest. But a lot of people have seen this in the background of previous videos that I've done over the last couple of months and said, oh, you've got one, can you tell us about it? There are other EV chargers that do the solar divert and whatnot at a similar price. So by all means, I'm not saying go out and get one of these, but for me, Certainly, if you're going down the home battery route, because I really would go for a Give Energy battery system over anything else, then again, it makes sense to have the same thing, doesn't it? Again, one ecosystem. Integration is exactly why people use Home Assistant and things like that, because they're getting things that don't talk to each other talking through Home Assistant. Well, now I don't need to bother with that because that talks to that, which talks to that, which talks to that and so forth. I believe the plan is to eventually build these in the UK as well. I mean, all the support and give energy themselves are a UK company, if that's something that you look for. Um, and I do like the fact that they listen. I mean, don't get me wrong. If give energy says something's coming out in a month, it'll be six. But when I first got one of these, you can see these blue LED lights. It's not as uh, obvious at the moment in here, but when that light goes off, it's like a Christmas tree. All you can see is blue flashing lights. And if that was on the outside of my house, it would be doing my heading because it would be, it'd be like a, a beacon. There'd be planes landing on my driveway because of these things. So I said, can we not have a button somewhere in the app or the, the dashboard to turn these LEDs off? No, like, yeah, sure. And they did. And I like that. I like the fact that you can say, how about this? Does this make sense? Yes, okay, let's build that into the next firmware or the next software update. And here we are. I quite like the fact that I've got that... Uh, that, that UK phone line, that, that support, the email, the dashboard, the app, all sorts of things built here. There are a couple of things that I think I'd like to change. The cable is five meters long. Personally, I could do with an extra meter there. It's just not quite long enough. It seems to be, even though they're both five meters, slightly shorter than the Omi that I've just removed. I don't know why. Um, it would be nice at some point as well to have a non-tethered option for me personally, because then you could use any cable length you want. But yeah, it, it's all right. I don't mind that at all. You can put the cable around the, the, the end here. Whoopsie. Oh no, the tag I never use, I can't find. Where's he gone? So there we have it. It's a charger. Uh, it doesn't do three phase again yet. I don't know if there's another one coming out. You'd have to ask Give Energy that. Um, and I'm looking forward to the summer when I can actually have enough excess solar to 
try the divert out because that's something which will be well it's quite cool isn't it to to drive around on something that you've generated yourself even though financially it makes more sense to actually export that excess solar now than it does use it yourself not sure what more to tell you to be honest other than thank you for watching uh, support the channel by making a comment clicking the like buttons all the usual stuff youtube channels always hammer you to to say at the end, like and subscribe. There's a reason why YouTube channels do that because the more you interact with a channel, with a video, the more the uh, algorithm, the YouTube algorithm pushes it onto other people and that makes the channel more popular. So that's the easiest way to support a channel. If you want to support this channel a bit further than that, then I've got a members only um, section, which is 99p for a month and you can cancel at any time and you get videos on Sunday instead of Friday and occasional live streams. And of course, don't forget about the second channel, which I sort of have done at the moment because I haven't had any spare videos. Uh, Driving Home, that's where the podcast occasionally turns up and behind the scenes sort of stuff. Everything is linked in the description below. So thank you for watching and um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs>